Although this video is about phrases, the very first thing that we need to know about speaking to somebody who is in pain is that it is way more of a listening job than it is of us talking. The worst thing to do when somebody comes to us and they're hurting is to just start giving them advice. And that's still what most of us tend to do. When somebody comes to us in a sad state of mind, we have an unsaid responsibility to make them feel better. And that doesn't happen through us giving advice. It happens through us communicating directly. How do we listen to someone who is in pain? And what are the exact phrases that we can use to bring them to a better mental state, along with some mistakes that we should definitely avoid using in such situations? Hey, my name is Radeep and I'm the founder of Fantically Speaking. And I love learning about effective communications and sharing those learnings with you so that you can level up your communications game as well. So we're going to break this down into three parts. We're going to start with acknowledging, seeking to understand, and finally offering support. And what are the phrases that we need to say and avoid in all these scenarios. But before we get into any of that, we first need to keep in mind again that this is way more of a listening job than it is of us speaking. I'm not going to get too deep into this because we've created an entire video on how you can become a better listener. Go check that out before or after you watch this video. Okay, so to start off, if somebody comes to us and they're hurting, we need to start by just acknowledging their pain. And we can use any of these phrases. That really sucks. I'm so sorry to hear that. Or this must be really hard for you. It must take so much strength to just share this with someone. Thank you for trusting me. We're essentially trying to tell them that it's okay to be in pain because of whatever situation they are in. We're not trying to add any sort of cheese on it. We're saying it as it is, that it is a bad situation. And we're sorry to hear that they are in that particular space because we care for them. And we definitely shouldn't say something like, be positive or just cheer up. Don't cry over it. It could be worse or just ranting off giving our own advice because they might not even want to hear our opinion. And another thing that we need to avoid saying, which we may tend to do really often, is to say something like, I know, I know what you're going through. I understand. And many times some people say that without actually having gone through a similar situation. So if you're that person and you haven't gone through something similar, just avoid saying something like that. And even if you have, there's a way to showcase that sense of empathy. But by saying something like, I know what you're going through, right off the bat, might make the other person feel like we are trivializing their issue. The correct way to say it is with a story. For example, let's say somebody comes to us and they've just been dumped by their significant partner. And if we've experienced a similar situation, we need to wait for them to finish their entire story, whatever it is that they want to tell us. Make sure that there is a pause between them finishing their story and before you start saying anything. If there's no pause, it means that they're not done talking and we need to let them finish. After that pause, we can say something to the effect of this. Three years ago, I was in a relationship with a person who I thought would be my life partner. But one day, I get a random text from her calling the whole thing off and she didn't even give me a proper reason. I know that your situation might not be the same as mine and I'm so sorry that you're going through this. But I will be here for you to support you through this because I know that your pain is completely justified. Now saying something like this does two things. First, it lets them know that we might have been in a similar situation without assuming it straight off. And secondly, it doesn't trivialize what they are going through and we let them know that it's okay to feel the pain that they might be going through. So after acknowledging, the next point is seeking to understand. When somebody is in pain and they come to us, it's important to know whether they want to talk about it or do they just want to rant. And we get the answer to this by simply asking, I'm so sorry that you're feeling this way, but if you want to talk about it, I'm always here for you. If not, that's absolutely all right too. Now, sometimes we may need to probe a little deeper to make them comfortable enough to confide in us. In that case, we can say something like this. I can't pretend to understand what you're going through because I don't. But I really do want to help you in any way I can. 
you're my best friend and I care about you. Do you want to maybe tell me what happened? After this, if they still don't want to talk about it or if they're seeming a little hesitant to give out the information, we should stop the conversation and just be with them. Just be pleasant with them and not talk or not say anything, in fact. But if they do want to talk about it, we need to understand by asking specific questions as to what went wrong in the first place, if that's not obvious from the get-go. And then we need to proceed towards making them feel better. And we already discussed this, that saying feel better, cheer up, you get over this, don't worry about it, is not really going to help them. Instead, we need to make them believe that whatever it is that we are going to be saying to cheer them up is not coming from a very superficial place. And we do this by letting them know that we know them better than most people. For example, if somebody gets fired from their job and they're upset about that and we want to say something to make them feel better, we can say something like this. You've been my best friend for as long as I can remember. Or I've been working with you for the past three years. And if I know one thing about you is that you are a great worker. Now, if they have been fired, they're not just probably humiliated by the entire situation, but they also might be questioning their own work ethic. But if it is true that they are actually not a bad worker and if they were just at the wrong place at the wrong time, saying something to this effect that we know who they are and we have a history with them and hence we are reassuring them that that is not the case. That just comes from a much more grounded space as opposed to just telling them, don't worry about it, that's not true. And sometimes people might just be in a bad situation that we can't really do anything or say anything to make them feel better. In such cases, we can say any of the following phrases. I wish I had something to say that would take the pain away, but I don't. All I can say is, I'm here to listen whenever you need. Again, we're just trying to tell them that, yeah, the situation that they are in is bad, but we're here for them. And that's the only thing we can do because there's nothing else that we can say or do to really make them feel better because the situation is just not in our control. And the last thing is to offer them support. If anybody comes to us and they're in pain and let's say they don't want to talk about it, we can still do some things to incrementally help them feel better. If somebody has suffered a death in their family or a loved one and they come to us and they're obviously really upset about it, there's not much to talk about in such a situation. In that case, if you're just around and we do simple things like offering them water every 15 or 30 minutes, calling for their favorite food, or calling people over who we know will probably cheer them up or make them feel just slightly better. Recently, my best friend's grandfather passed away and a bunch of us had just gone over to his house just to sit with him and be with him. And his girlfriend came over and she brought along her pet dog with her. And because she knows how much he loves the dog, and just having that slightly playful energy around in this solemn environment that we were in helped make the situation incrementally better. And even after somebody has spoken to us about something that they were upset about or just ranted to us, a few days later, we can still offer them support by simply sending them a few text messages or by giving them a phone call and saying something like this. Hey, I just wanted you to know that I'm thinking of you and if you ever need to speak about the other day, I'm just a phone call away. Or I've had you on my mind for the past few days. I'm wondering if you're feeling any better. And by saying phrases like this, we just reassure the other person that while there might not be much that we can do, we're always there to lend a helping hand. And that's about it. I hope that was helpful. And if you have any more questions when it comes to things like effectively communicating your points. We have an entire website with in-depth articles dedicated just for that. So go check out franticallyspeaking.com.